animation allows people's imaginations to take in science in a way that a periodic table on the wall never will. It's a storytelling method that brings in imaginative landscapes from other places, because it is whimsical. You can look at a thing and accept it, even if it's not naturalistic. But we were really pushing it in this one. I think we're trapped into a set of conversations about carbon that we just keep on having again and again. This film is setting out to broaden what we know and think about carbon. And what we're doing, I think, is trying to crack the mold. That's why we needed an artist like Bruce, because Bruce's work is so unexpected. I was pretty excited to figure out how to represent hard science with a kind of aesthetic that we're not used to seeing. You need a way to allow people's imagination in and people's understanding in. It's not just so they can take in the hard information, but so that they'll enjoy it. So one of the real challenges with a film about an element that's all around us, uh, but that we can't see, is to make the invisible visible. Bruce was really skating the edge of the abstract with his animations the whole time. The very design of the atom of carbon, that was really controversial. I was really attracted to the basic premise that carbon has a persona, is female, is present, is strong, is changeable. And I thought, as an animator, how can you give a character character without a face, without facial expressions? What we eventually ended up with was this glowing, vibrating magenta orb with a, a voice that's depicted by a flame. You call me an atom, an element, a fundamental building block of life. You name me Carbon. We wanted him to push us out of more conventional ways of depicting Carbon's world into more unusual ways of doing it. The starscapes that we built in this film, they came about from practical effects, like the high-speed shoot that we did. He could have simply painted this world, but instead he wanted to use real-life practical effects and build them into his cosmic universe. welding sparks flying off a welder. They end up looking like this living star that's just been formed. When you put it behind footage of painted things and particle systems and light play, you end up getting this imagery that looks amazingly like nebulae in outer space. Oh yeah, that was worth it. That was great. This is a fantastic experiment. This gave Bruce a whole set of resources that he could build into the Big Bang. I love that quality in these animations. It feels like there's a human artist behind them. That has become kind of the visual stamp for our film. You gotta love photosynthesis. Wow. And what are we doing? We are taking sunlight and putting it through this mini chemical factory and outputting energy. That's extraordinary. The black backgrounds, which were really a result of filming in a pandemic, became an opportunity for our animation team. And so in this way, yeah, we are embodied sunlight. The personal enthusiasm of every scientist was super infectious. And I thought that's something that would be really nice to pull out even farther and play with. Carbon's a pretty promiscuous atom. She likes to hook up with just about any other element in the periodic table. I mean, you, you have carbon here and she, she, she loves to bond with hydrogen. So with 
scientists like Bob Hazen, he's so animated about what he's talking about. She'll bond with iron and nickel and cobalt, zirconium. So when he talks about nobody bonds with zirconium, it's exciting and it needs something to go with it. We have Mark Miodonic, the material scientist, talking about how polymers are formed from murk. Tamara Davis sort of puts her hands together and talks about a sun forming. And so Bruce puts a star that spontaneously comes into being between her hands. It's a rabbit out of the hat moment. There's a somewhat natural feeling to this completely unnatural combination of, of elements. You understand that what they're excited about is what you're looking at on the screen. The reason the animation process worked so well was because my co-director Daniela and I trust in Bruce. What Bruce could do with animation was find a language of metaphor that could help us understand this world so that we can go on the journey. It's not like we're making a film for scientists to understand the science. We're making a film for non-scientists to be able to have a little bit of a window into it. I mean, that's a great deal of the pleasure in making it.